typical doses of prednisone for polymyalgia rheumatica or PMR. Hi, I'm Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist, and I help people struggling with prednisone side effects to find out how to not just survive prednisone, but thrive while in prednisone. It can be hard is to know is what you're taking a normal dose. So if you've been diagnosed with polymyalgia rheumatica, I want you to know that it is a medic. It is a condition where prednisone is actually first line. There are a lot of conditions that use prednisone, but PMR is one where it should be used before anything else. So what's a normal dose? According to the current treatment recommendations, um, at the very beginning to start when you're first diagnosed, they recommend to start between anywhere between 12 and a half to 25 milligrams of prednisone. And that really depends on a lot of factors that your doctor can really help you narrow in on. But somewhere in that range is the normal starting dose for PMR. Some people have to go even higher. I have a friend who has PMR and he has to take higher doses sometimes if he has a really bad flare or there's something else going on with his health. And so I know he's gone up to 40 milligrams, but the typical dose is usually about 25 milligrams and it can go as low as 12 and a half milligrams. Why would it be a higher or a lower dose? So if you're having incredible, awful pain, you're completely disabled, um, unable to like get out of bed in the morning or um, put your shirt on properly or lift a cup to your mouth, those things that require the use of your shoulders um, and your waist, your hips, those typical things then you might need a higher dose to begin with um, because the benefit to you outweighs the risks of other side effects. But people who are at a higher risk of the side effects might start out a lower dose because we want to prevent the miserable side effects. So for example, um, seven and a half milligrams a day for a long time for a 72 year old woman with prednisone would be okay if she has enough vitamin D and calcium that she's eating on a daily basis, if she's performing muscle strengthening exercises and is taking medications to help prevent osteoporosis. But if a other person has a family history of osteoporosis, is of low body weight, doesn't weigh very much, and low bone mineral density before starting the prednisone, then, and isn't taking calcium, vitamin D or any supplementation, then she's at a higher risk for osteoporosis and a lower dose would be better, wiser for her to lessen her exposure to all of the possible side effects from the prednisone, especially in this situation that I'm talking about osteoporosis. So that is the normal starting dose. Um, then the goal is to get to 10 milligrams a day. If you can get to 10 milligrams a day, that's the goal. I know it's super hard to get there for a lot of people. Then the recommendation is to taper to get there within 48 weeks. And then once at 10 milligrams to taper by one milligram every four weeks until you're off. So if you got to 10 milligrams, then you'd go to nine milligrams for four weeks. That's like a month. Then you go to eight milligrams for a month seven milligrams per month, six, five, four, three, two, one off. That means that's almost a year of treatment just to get from 10 milligrams and down. And if you ever have to go back up, that kind of starts the clock over. I know that's, it's a long time to be on this medication. I had to take it myself. I know it's awful. I had to take it for nine months. So what happens if it comes back? What happens when you've gotten down to seven milligrams and suddenly when you wake up in the morning, your, your shoulders aren't working. You can't reach behind your back. You can't lift a cup to your mouth. Well, then the goal, the plan is to increase your dose to the last dose that worked for you. So if you went down to seven and it's not working, try going back, right up, back excuse me, back right up to eight, see if it'll work for you. And this is something obviously you're going to do in conjunction with your doctor. I am not your doctor. I'm only here to tell you what the expert recommendations are. Um, then 
try to taper it back down again within four to eight weeks. So if you had, if you got stuck at seven and you, you knew you were fine at eight, then stay there and then try to get back down to seven. Some people can't do that drop directly from eight to seven or whatever. And so they have to do an even slower taper. They often call it the dead slow taper. And it means doing even more slower drops and even sometimes using half milligram dosages, splitting a one milligram tablet in half. If you want to know more about tapering, I have a ton of videos. Um, I even have a downloadable taper chart you can use on my website that can help you to plan out your strategy of how to actually get down off of prednisone. But what if you can't? right? What if you get yourself down to five milligrams and you just can't go to four milligrams? Is it worth it to get off it completely? Or is it better to just stay at five milligrams long-term? Well, actually they did some research about this and I think it's so interesting. Let me find the right spot on. He says that his alternative view is that very low doses of glucocorticoids, which is somewhere between two to four milligrams a day, is a realistic therapeutic option for many people because there's a lot of evidence that no matter how many times they've tried to get doctors to prescribe less prednisone or no prednisone, there's a certain number of people who continue to need it long-term. And so they, the numbers have gone down, but there's just people who always need to continue taking it. And so It's not that the doctors aren't trying hard enough to get people off. It's that the low dose is, has some potential harm, but the benefits outweigh the risks often in that situation when it's between two and four milligrams, that the risks for most side effects are nearly gone because it's nearly the same dose as what your body would be making itself. And so that's where it might be appropriate and safe to continue taking it long-term. But as always, this is definitely to be done in consultation with your doctor. So another factor to consider here is that um, for people with PMR, they did a study and they compared people who have PMR and most of them have to take prednisone and then 359 people who are age matched, same age, same gender, who don't have, have PMR. And they looked at the side effects and they found that because they're taking down the inflammation and treating it, that they don't necessarily have many differences in side effects, except for one thing. And that's cataracts, more risk of cataracts with taking prednisone long-term. So it makes sense that if you absolutely cannot function without prednisone, then you don't need to feel guilty about it, that you just are making a calculated risk benefit calculation. (laughs) Let me say that better. You are purposefully deciding that the benefits outweigh the risks for you, that you understand the risks, you understand the benefits, and you're saying look, I need to stay here between two and four milligrams long-term because otherwise I can't get out of bed in the morning. Right. And if that's like, if that's what you have to do, that's okay. I know you would love to be off of it, but for some people you just can't. So if that's you give yourself some, some grace and realize that there are risks, but you're making the choice purposefully. So I would love to hear what your comments are, what dose you're currently taking for PMR. If you're finding it is treating you adequately, or if it's not, what other questions do you have about prednisone and PMR? Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist.